Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Wanted to make a quick video real quick, uh, talking about what's one of the best things, I would say the most important that you need to have uh, if your company offers it um, when you start going to a new company or when you get in the trucking industry. The most important, I feel, and I'm going to give you a quick story on why. So uh, I would say um, not last March, the March before that, I think it was in March, can't really remember. Um, I was doing a Home Depot run, which I usually run for Kohl's. That's neither, you know what I mean? Um, Lowe's were light for Kohl's, so they asked me, you, know, you want to run some Home Depot? I said, that's cool. Um, and I was running to PA. And when I was running to PA, you know, Home Depot, it's a little bit different. Um, how could I say it? Some of the stores are kind of tight, kind of weird. So I ended up getting to the store or whatever. And I asked a guy like, hey, um, can I just follow this road out? He said, yeah, go ahead and just follow that road. And, you know, you turn right and then you turn right again. You right back on US 30. I don't know if anybody know what that's at, but that's PA crosses right into Ohio. You can cross into Ohio. So I said, cool, cool. Um, so I ended up dropping a load, whatever. Drop, did the load. And um, <laughs> I left out, like, you know, like he said, I made the first right. But when I got down to the stops, the it was one right. It was a Denny's ahead of me. I made the first right, easy peasy. Um, then I made, tried to make the next right. Well, when I came to the stop sign there, it was it was super tight. It was like a stop sign. Then it was um, a pole, like a little bit behind the stop sign. And then you know, I don't know if you ever seen like a concrete median, like right there that you know, like so that you can't turn left. And then it was like a little median in front of me, not like really like close in front of me, but it was so that people can't make that left turn. So um, I was like, okay. Well, you know, we're not meant to go around this. So it's like, all right, I really can't back up. You know what I mean? Can't back up. So I, I took the right turn. Well, in order for me to take the right turn, I, you know, did a button hook. I'm pretty sure the majority of y'all know what that is. A button hook. And that's where you swing left to go right. And I did so. And I, I did have to go over top of the little median over there. Um, it was just it wasn't no big median or nothing like that. No, you know, whatever. Well, I ended up coming on the curb on the passenger side. Well, right as I'm making a full right turn and stuff like that. Now, mind you, it was a stop sign there, too. Okay. And a pole after that. Well, right after I made that turn city police comes down whatever immediately basically pulls me over said no you're not supposed to make right turns there you struck the pole um this this and that and and i'm like no i didn't <laughs> i know i didn't strike no pole he's like yeah you did um we just went on back and forth with the city police to the point i was like listen just get somebody from the Highway State Patrol out here. I prefer them over you. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe some people probably can, you know, speak on that. But uh, I basically told them, like, I ain't talking to you. You have basically no, I ain't going to say jurisdiction over me. But you do, but you don't, you know. Uh, he wanted to see my hours of service. And I told him, you, no, you, nah. Go ahead and get somebody down here that no can comprehend or that or that can understand my hours of service you know i don't want you, you know so how the state patrol came down and uh come to find out i did when i hit rode over the now mind you it's a stop sign then the pole okay i did go over the curb i didn't say i did go over the curb i went over the curb with my back tandems too well i guess i flattened my tire somehow the lip of the curb <laughs> pilt back my once the tire slid off a corner of the curb 
chip my rim and uh, leak the air out the tire. So make a long story short, if that happened, then how would I hit the cur uh, the pole as well? But that's neither here or there. So talking to the highway state patrol, my logs were good, obviously. Um, he did a level two just because he wanted to be a dick. And yeah, he was caught out. Um, but I sort of checked the truck and the only thing they could, uh, basically get me with was, um, the non-moving violation, but he hit me with a improper right turn. Now with an improper right turn to PA is considered a reckless driving. Okay. Could be considered reckless driving depending on the damage. Okay, now mind you, the officer tried to say I hit the pole. Now anybody knows if you hit a pole, there's going to be splintering in that pole. It's going to be some type of wood fragments into your into the side of your um, trailer. It's going to be something. Okay, I end up taking pictures and everything like that for my company. Well, no splinters on the ground, but they still you know charge me with it. So what this comes to is. The most important thing that you can get, truck driver legal services. All right. Now, when you do that, the best thing is if you're in an accident, make sure that you get everybody's name that you can. Everybody's. Okay. Every officer that you talk to, either get a picture of their, uh, uh, because you want them to be held accountable just as you being held accountable. The one officer said there was no way for me to have hit the pole because in order for me to hit the pole, I would have had to take the stop sign out. Um, it was no splintering on my truck from the from the pole. It, it was pictures of, I mean, it was damage to the pole, but you know how, like, let's say you hit something with wood, right? You know how it's like, a, it, you could just, you could, tell the difference between good wood and chip wood right like you know okay well that's lightly colored this is darker color as if this is exposed more to air than that was no none of that was happening um so i ended up calling my lawyer people and jb hunt was basically waiting on seeing how um Pennsylvania was going to like charge it. So if it's just an improper right turn, then that was fine. They, you know, it is what it is. But if it was, let's say, improper right turn categorized as reckless driving, um, that's a little bit different, you know? Um, so what that would have meant is that's immediate termination. Uh, period. No if, ands, or buts about it. So I was up in lim lim uh, limbo for a little bit. I talked to my lawyers and stuff like that and sent them all the pictures and the, uh, the cops' names and stuff like that. And it ended up getting dropped. Now, the reason why I got dropped, this is the main reason, is the cop, <laughs> this is why you get the cops' information. The one cop who said he did not see, think I hit the pole was also the one who told me that it's a truck's no right turn right in front of Denny's. And I said, not, well, not, let me rephrase that. It wasn't in front of Denny's. It was on the corner. Like, so you come down, you make your right, first right turn right there. It was supposed to be a sign right there. And I told him it was no sign. You know, he was like, okay, well, he drove up there, came back, and he said, yeah, there, the sign is not there. Somebody must have tore it down. So that was the reason why I got the improper right turn removed. Um, got it dropped down to just non-moving violation. I did get the, I had to keep the one non-moving violation for the flat tire. Okay. Um, but that was it, basically. Um, but the importance to this is, even if you're with a trucking company that does not offer um, legal insurance uh, for truckers, find some. Um, I'm a, if I know how, I'm going to try to put my insurance legal company that I have on the screen here. One part, I don't know where at, but somewhere. And um, 
and I'll get some other information or some other uh, legal companies that you guys can pick up. It's very affordable. I think mine's is two dollars a week. I think the one I had with Western Express was like seven. This one I th doesn't think is as great as the one I had for Western Express. Um, the one for Western Express, you didn't have to make any payments up front to them. Like um, when I had that flat tire coming from Tennessee with US uh, Western Express, I didn't have to pay up front. Um, but with this company, depending on the um, severity of the ticket, um, it's either $100 or 150 or somewhere around that but mind you that reckless right turn was i think <laughs> i think it was i might be i might be wrong on this 36 points on your csa i think yeah 36 i think but uh, since it got dropped down and it had all the right evidence i think it got dropped down to zero and the non-movie violations were zero points so that was beautiful. That's all I cared about was my CSA score. Um, that's what insurance companies go off of when they try to uh, insure you or anything like that going to different companies. Um, but yeah, legal insurance, man, you it's a must have. I'm going to tell you that. And then some of these, they allow you to pay up front or um, direct, uh, a direct, like where you where you allow them to take the they allow you allow them to take the money directly out of your bank account. Seven bucks a week or twenty eight dollars a month is not bad compared to uh five, six hundred dollar fine, you losing your job and shit like that. I'm gonna just tell you that right now. Period. Um but I think that was one of the best things that could have happened is be having that um insurance. But that's one of the most that I think that is the biggest thing you should get when you start with any company that's the first thing you should get first thing you should shop for i don't get i don't care i think that's more important than the health insurance you out here trying to protect your cdl you gotta think your cdl is your livelihood man it's no coming back from losing it well you don't never lose your cdl but it's kind of hard to get your csa points down so um with that being said man super early i'm gonna go ahead and close this with you know uh, much appreciated to all the new subscribers and the old ones um for the people who's been following me for a little while i'm trying to get back into this more informational videos um i'm gonna do i'm gonna try to get a video where me calling a recruiter here soon so that i can find me a camera to buy purchase at a decent price i'm not no big youtuber i ain't got no five six hundred dollars i do have the money but i don't want to be spending it on no five six hundred dollar camera and shit like that so maybe i could find one for like three four i don't know I really don't really matter but um yeah man y'all be easy be safe out there uh the winter weather watch out for these drivers distraction is a, is a must make sure you focus on the road all the time you know uh, your life is key man as you guys can see today we lost you know kobe bryant last night and a tragic helicopter crash, him and his daughter, and you know, a couple other people, you know. But um, just remember, man, your life is important, very important, especially the people you leave behind due to some reckless acts. Not saying this stuff was reckless, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying distractions and stuff like that on the road can be key, y'all. Uh, but outside of that, man, y'all have a beautiful day, a blessed day, and uh, I'll see y'all.